What's up guys, it's yet another Sunday here. One week until the drift event on, basically on Friday, I have to be ready. So Friday, I think I'm taking the day off of work and I'm gonna try and be 100% ready for the drift event uh, because Friday afternoon when Steph gets done work, we're gonna load the car up on the trailer and then uh, we're going out with some friends Friday night and then I think possibly later Friday night we might be going down to the track and camping out or we might just save it and head on down Saturday morning. So wrapping up things this weekend um, and today I think we're going to Joe's house to build a bracket for my e-brake which I kind of mentioned in the last video but I also have something that kind of a last minute decision to do. Um, I have so I have this spare cluster um, for, uh, it, it was from a junkyard car that I got it, I actually sold the gauges out of, but on the cluster on my car, none of the gauges actually work. So, except for the tack, the fuel gauge doesn't work, the speedo doesn't work. Um, I basically use it for the check engine light and the tack. So mine doesn't have a plastic cover on it. It broke a little while back. So I have the plastic cover off of this one. So what I decided to do was get one of these uh, OBD2 Bluetooth scanners. Uh, this one's a pan long OBD2 scanner for Android. I'm not an Android user, but I'll get into that in a second. So uh, that's the part number right there, PLB02. I got it on Amazon. It was like 12 bucks. So it's a uh, Amazon, or I'm sorry, it's a Bluetooth OBD2 like transmitter. So then Steph had this Android tablet that she hadn't, uh, she doesn't use anymore. And I decided to, with some fancy Velcro, mount it to the plastic on the gauge cluster. So that in front of me, I will essentially have, um, I don't think so the other way. Using the Torque app, which is what this uh, OBD2 unit is meant for, you open up the Torque app, and it can display gauges that the ECU will read out. So my ECU, We'll read out uh, the, the acceleration, accelerometer. I don't even know what that really is. Uh, that's based off of like the movement of the unit itself, of the tablet. So I have a digital readout of coolant temp right in front of me, boost, vacuum right in front of me. Uh, I don't know if the boost is going to work. I'll have to see because um, I don't think there's anything on my car that can reference the boost. But either way. Attack, which is the only other thing I had before. Fuel system status, voltage meter, intake temperature, uh, the math, whatever that is. Uh, but basically, I can open up a bunch of different gauges and have them displayed in front of me um, that you know I didn't have before. I mean, I know I have a coolant temp gauge and uh, the voltage readout on the battery and things like that, but it just kind of puts it in front of my face and it's exactly what the ECU is reading. This morning what I'm gonna do is pull the trim piece around my cluster and I'm gonna clip this plastic piece in so that um, I can just take this tablet in and out uh, when I want. The other thing I like about it is it has a headphone plug somewhere on it, I think on the top here, but I can ultimately put music on this and um, plug it into my head unit and use this right in front of me to control my music and things like that. So that's part one of my delivery yesterday. Part two are some driving gloves. So I got these race quit gloves yesterday. They're actually pretty nice. They're all suede, no leather. Uh, I saw a lot of the cheaper gloves were leather uh, palms and things like that. So these are all suede, uh, which is what I was going for because I don't have a suede wheel. I have a painted wheel, so I feel like these this would kind of glide across the wheel a little bit better when I wanted to as opposed to leather. Um, but yeah, they're one of the cheaper gloves out there. They're not anything fancy. I think they're only single layer. Um, they were like 30 bucks, $35. Um, I think 42 actually after shipping on Amazon as well. Uh, so... I just wanted to get a set to have for the event just to maybe make life a little bit easier and be able to grip the wheel better or stop the wheel better in my hands than just using my hand on the painted wheel. 
So I was also going to rent a helmet and I decided that after factoring in the cost of renting the helmet, shipping it to me, shipping it back, only having it for a weekend, it was like 80 bucks. So I just decided to go ahead and I ordered a helmet from Summit Racing uh, yesterday. So that should be shipping tomorrow. Um, I figured buying one is just going to be cheaper in the long run, especially if I continue to do this. So we get started now on this cluster and then uh, we're just kind of waiting on Joe to um, hit me up and let me know that I can come over. Uh, but it looks like we're taking a break. Uh, cause Steph brought me breakfast. Hard for you guys to see, but basically I have to remove this plastic trim panel around the gauge cluster uh, so that I can access it and clip that clear plastic in. So to do that, there are two screws up here that I don't even have in my car because it clips in and holds in fine. So, move the steering wheel all the way down. Just slide right out. Unplug the connections for the buttons. And then, finagle this out. Put it to the side. And then we have access to the full cluster. So I'm going to take the tablet off of this, pop the plastic cover off of this it's cluster off. first. All right. So then plastic cover goes in. Slide the trip meter button through, line it all up, and then you just press to clip it all in. Plug my connections back in. Flip it back in. There it is. And then the moment of truth. Mount up the tablet right in the center there. Pump the steering wheel back up so I can see the tablet. And then So on the screen at the top corner here, it says connected to ECU, okay. And if I go ahead and start the car. And this is the plug right here. It just plugs right into the OBD2 port. And that, like, that's that's the install right there. That's all. All right, we're at Joe's. And we're making, well, Joe is making the uh, e-brake mount. So um, we first started by reinforcing the center console. That was the first step. And then he's cutting out the base plate right now, and then we're gonna um, then we're gonna move forward from there to figure out a mounting solution for here. Um, aside from up in here, so uh, what we did we just got a piece of metal that we bolted to the shifter uh, bolt location, and then we ran a bolt through the p the panel. So now there is virtually no movement in that panel anymore. So now Joe's cutting the base plate and then we're gonna figure out how we can run mounts to this panel itself.
This is a Ryan Little production. So my phone died at Joe's, but the hydro e-brake is in, everything's secured. So like I showed you guys, we made that bracket on the back side, holds the base plate, and then we made this leg right here. Uh, eventually I'm going to bring all this stuff out and uh, paint it all up, but it'll do for right now while we're still working with it. Um, I think I'm gonna end up making another leg for this corner um, because I mean when you pull it, it doesn't really move much uh, especially after bracing this whole panel uh, but once it's bled and there's pressure in the lines this front corner might try and lift up like that so I can just go ahead and I'll make a leg to secure it either like down here or if I want to make a longer leg down here to prevent it from uh, from like pulling back like this. The next step is to start running the lines. I have these Russell 3AN 90 degree uh, fittings that go into a straight 3AN fitting on the ends. So these I'm going to run through the floor and they're going to join to the rear brake lines. The front half of the brake lines are going to come through the shifter hole and they're going to run inside the car along here and then come out from behind the trim piece that will cover all this and then go right into the fittings on the e-brake. I've got the trusty electric drill out for this job and this is a half inch drill bit and this is the biggest drill bit that I have. so. Um, it's a half inch diameter, so this will be the size hole I drill. I'm probably going to drill one hole for each line. And I... Alright, so I drilled two holes right there, and the lines, oh sorry, the lines will run out and down behind the leg uh, so they stay behind the trim panel and then through the floor of the car. So now I'm gonna go under the car and show you guys what it looks like down there. All right, it's very tight down here. So there's my lines where they come through the floor. They're just dangling there right after the first carrier bearing. So I don't really have much room. Let's, ah. all right, so they're gonna come around this way. And then ultimately connect to the rear lines right here and I'll I'll use something to secure the lines to the floor of the car um, something like one of these um, I don't know what they're called C clamps whatever so the lines are the connections are back here I have, I think I have enough slack in the one line. I tied them up like this before, after we did the subframe swap. But I think there's enough slack in the one line to reach this point. I'll have to undo it and see. Um, and if it is, that's perfect. That means I don't have to order a sectional line. The other one, that's the one I'm gonna have to measure and order a sectional line to, uh, to reach this point for. These two lines right here, this is my fuel line. Um, these two lines right here, I'm going to disconnect. And um, 
instead of sending them through the shift linkage area, I think I might just drill two holes further up in the floor in on the tunnel. Maybe like here, because there's nothing really around this area here. There's a lot of space between the drive shaft. And I'll have them come down through here and then just loop around and then go right into the car and then I'll run them up to the brake. So now, yeah, now I'm gonna drill two holes for this. And then once these two holes are drilled, I'll start working down here, cutting lines or cutting zip ties and uh, disconnecting brake lines. So let's see what we can get into now. Here. All right, here's an update. The lines are connected to the handbrake lines, the rear lines. I don't think I'm actually gonna need to order any more line. Now I'm trying to feed the front lines up into the car. The one keeps leaking fluid, so I'm just gonna let that sit in the pan for a little bit. But the one is through the hole. So I'll show you how it's routed. All right, pardon the mess of wires here right now. So that's gonna come through this hole here. I really hope we have enough length on these. And right now it's looking like we're not having enough length on these. All right, let me see if I can get some more slack out from underneath the car. I just removed that C bracket that was holding that in. So let's see. Can we get enough? We can. That's it right there. All right, I'm gonna try and run it through behind here. Oh, I need like another, another inch or so. Come on. That's it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I know it seems super complex, but I'm really happy with the way this is turning out right now. I just need to get the other line up in here, check clearance of everything, and then I guess it's gonna be time to start bleeding. Um, I'm gonna need a second set of hands for that, but yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. All right, second line is in and run, and this is the mess that we're now working with. So now I'm gonna tighten these down, and uh, where is my wrench? Remember guys, when you're working with fittings, uh, use a line wrench. It'll help you prevent stripping over the edges and uh, marring up the finish. These guys are brand new, these are used, but I'm gonna try and clean these up the best I can. And when you're doing AN lines, do start over here. You wanna do it till it's snug and give it like a quarter turn. You don't want to over tighten them and uh, you run. You would then run the risk of cracking the flare uh, inside the line. There is uh, no more sunlight right now, but it's finally time to bleed the brakes. So I tightened it down. The lines are just still hanging under the car, but I want to get everything bled. My dad's going to come out and give me a hand with that. So it looks good. I laid the carpet panel back in. I'm gonna trim the carpet panel right here and probably right here where the lines come through. Uh, that way I can slide it back in and it'll look as OEM as possible. All right guys, the rear brakes are bled. Uh, we bled them enough for now. We got a lot of air out of the system. Um, the e-brake works, so when you pull it, it does stop the car. However, it doesn't stop it as well as I would like it to. So, uh, and also the pedal is still very soft. So one night this week, we're gonna bleed the whole entire system. I'm gonna get all four corners up off the ground and bleed the whole system as you should, you know, left corner to back right corner, however it is per the factory service manual so that the whole entire system gets bled at once. But it works. So that's good, nothing's leaking, also good. Um, so yeah, I just went through and made a list of the stuff that I need to do. So I'm gonna, I need to mount the toe strap in the front. I have a rear one, you kind of see it hanging right at the corner of the piece of paper right there next to the muffler. Uh, I have the rear one mounted, I'm gonna mount a front toe strap. Transfer case brace, once that comes in, 
tie up the braking fuel lines along the middle of the car that I cut down all the zip ties from. Uh, we got to secure those back up. Bleed the whole entire system front and rear. Make a leg mount for the hydro. Uh, so that's going to be to secure the front right corner of the hydro down so when you yank on it, it doesn't lift up at all. Uh, trim the carpet. Wrap the rear CVs. Um, I showed you guys in the last video maybe I don't even know if I did but they were wrapped in saran wrap to keep the grease in that didn't work out too well it usually works for me I'm literally just duct taping my boots um, and just sending it because uh, like I said that diffs only in the car for drifting so whatever duct tape will do the job I need a front left nut for the passenger seat mount and then I just need the nut and bolt the front end make sure everything's tight and in the steering and things like that and then we should be ready to go uh, the car is ready Thursday night we're picking up the trailer and uh, that'll be where the adventure begins um, on my first drift event and the first drift event with the 3000 GT being real wheel drive hope you guys enjoyed today's video I know we got a lot done with the e-brake and that was a really big step for the car so I'm very happy that we did get it done and um, we're moving on to the next thing on the list. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and also, I'm going to call it the first rear-wheel drive 3000 GT drift car. Uh, I think overseas there might be a couple of people that tried doing it, but that's what I'm going to dub this. So, make sure you hit that like button, and definitely subscribe for more updates coming up, guys.